Hey folks, welcome to Tully River Quail. Gonna show you a project that I'm working on here for my commercial cages that I build. I call my commercial cages the Alquail Tries because they're predator proof. But uh, I uh, have these metal commercial cages that I make. You might have seen how my um, on my YouTube channel, my videos of how I make them. But I wanted to add a uh, an extension uh, an extra space that I could use for the winter time since the metal cages have not really that much protection except for the divider. So I made these little annexes that can be used in the summertime or the winter time and they clip onto the front of the cage. Basically you open the cage door, my cage doors are, are seven inches high by 12 inches wide hole. So I open the cage door and I attach, hook this onto the top rung and then this bottom floor hooks under the egg roll out space and the bottom is supported by the egg roll out lip. This is a removable sandbox or you could put bedding in there and that can lift up through the top. Now, these don't have lids because on my cage builds, I have a clear chloroplast, laminated plastic or uh, corrugated plastic um, windscreen that I dropped down over the front of the cages, which you may have seen. And when I have this all hooked up, I'll show you how that works. But the windscreen will actually be the roof for these Johnny boxes that I'm calling them. So it's pretty cool. In the summertime, you can take off, snip the little five little zip ties and just have it exposed and still use the sandbox. So, and this is all corrugated plastic, so it comes out, you can wash it, power wash it. Um, the seams are bolted together with these special Chicago screws, and they're also glued and stapled initially just to be held together. So, I'll show you how I make them quickly in case you ever wanted to do something similar to this. Um, you can see I have a bunch of blanks right here that I'm working on for my cage sets. I am making 12. Um, when I finish and I start to sell these, I'm going to laser my logo on an eighth inch thick cherry and put that right on the face plate there. So the cool thing about this is, is when you want to access your birds or you need to get the eggs, you can lift up the flap and get in this way or reach in, or you can just lift the bottom out and unhook it. And this comes right out and access your egg tray if you're getting eggs. But anyway, let me just show you a quick little thing of what I do and how I made this. So I designed this to be a 36 inch wrap around Actually, it's 34. I had to cut a slot off. And it's 14, 14 by 10, 10 and a half. This little lip is the part that hooks under. And I have it so that the top rail is on the top side. So that hooks under the cage lip of the top of the rollout hole. <laughs> if that makes sense to you. Anyway, um, forgot what I was saying but anyway I'm gonna have these logos on there I would guess if you were interested I could print your logo on there as well or cage numbers or whatever um, but it's pretty cool so I'll have two of these on each one of my 36 inch cages so back to what I'm working with uh, 36 inch wide one inch by two inch welded wire and then one inch by one half inch PVC coated um, flooring. Um, you don't have to put the sandbox in there. Um, you can put bedding in the sandbox. You can put sand in the sandbox. If you don't want to use a sandbox, you could use just a cereal box and cut a hole out of it. And you can see that's what I've been doing. I have uh, a few cereal boxes. I cut a little hole out of them. I use that sometimes to put some bedding in there. And then I use this kind of tray for sand. But 
anyway, back to what I did. So this perimeter is 36. That gives me ability to have some extra for the hooks. So cut that out. I got a 36 by 24 sheet of corrugated uh, translucent plastic, corrugated plastic. Uh, it's called Coraplast. And that allows the light to come through, but diffuse light. So you still get the egg laying potential. And then I cut off an inch and a half because the wrap takes a little bit of the space up. And I mark 10 inches from the sides. And I'll tell you, this right here, if you own a quail farm, you need to get you a 36 inch central machinery from Harbor Freight uh, metal bender. I mean, it bends anything, but I use it to make good seams in this coroplast, which I use a lot wherever I can because it's light, strong, they can't peck through it. But that machine, if you, especially if you join the Harbor Freight Club, you can get that for under 300 bucks. I mean, that's incredible. So having a roll of cage wire and that little machine right there, that little bender, make short work of anything you want to do. You can make J-Box feeders. You can do anything pretty, it's pretty hefty. It, it can bend some pretty good metal. So anyway, so what I do is I cut these out 34. I cut the little lip out so it fits over top of the tray. I mark the edges where I want to make the bend. And then I just take it over there. And all I do, I don't have to use the bending brake where the part that I lift up from the bottom after it's clamped down from the top. Um, all I have to do is pull this little lever right here and that locks it down and squishes the coroplast enough just to be able to create a seam. I do the same thing with these floor boxes and I created a form that fits inside here. Sorry for my poor editing. Um, so that fits right inside there and I use this as my form. I'll go over and I'll trace this equally spaced on my floor material and then I'll just go ahead and bend it and then make a little slice so that I have tabs to fold it. Um, I use these little male female Chicago screws that are pretty cool and this is a half inch or a quarter inch so I have two eighth inch pieces there's the female one the males here they screw together give you a flat surface uh, they look nice so all right so anyway I make the pens make little slits fold them I hold them in place with these little clips and then I use the hot glue gun to glue them together. I use a stapler to hold it together while it dries. And then I use this little hole punch. This is nice to have too. I got that on eBay or Amazon for 20 bucks something. And you know, you need to punch a lot of holes when you're making stuff. And that gives you replicable holes wherever you want them. It has a little measuring device so you can tell it how far down you want it to punch so it becomes uniform makes it look professional and then as far as my laser printing goes um, I had these wooden blanks and I use a laser pecker too and that does a pretty nice job if you can look at my logo there that's burning pretty good and that's at like 20% depth so that looks nice and when I stain that it really pops so anyway, sorry. Jeez, Matisse. I need a professional video guy. All right, so there you have it. There's my techniques, my tricks. Um, uh, like I said, I'll have two of those, one for each side of my partition 36 inch cage and that'll allow both sides of the cage to have their own little sandbox and i also one last thing is this is the material that i have that i make my my visors or my windscreens out of this blue material peels off but you can see it's a clear clear plastic 
So it's a little diffuse because of the corrugations and the laminations within the plastic. Once that blue comes off, it's pretty clear. So you can actually see the quail inside there. Um, looks more like a Beatles album than an actual portrait because <laughs> they're not perfectly, uh, you can't see them perfectly, but you can see them. You can see their eyes, they can see you. So I make these, I'm gonna make some of them out of this material and some of them out of this material. This is easier to bend. This I have to score and bend along the score so that it's only one layer of material, but this material is a little thicker. So basically just cut along one of the flutes and then bend it away from the cut. And then the inner layer is the continuous wall part. All right, folks, well, I better get back to work here. I just wanted to show you my uh, Johnny Box Tully River Quail cage extensions that I'm building here. Um, I did mention a little bit about my laser. Uh, we're going to start offering wooden business cards that have NFC and also um, tap tags. So you can leave a tap tag that's NFC enabled that has a picture of a quail, maybe your name, and then type in free eggs or whatever and then someone will go in and hit it with their phone tap it with their phone and it'll go to your website and you can talk to them you can actually send it to a video you can have them download your contact information it can go right to your website it can call you i mean whatever action you want to program that card to do or that tap tag to do um it'll do it so we'll maintain that for you with our little marketing tool. So if you buy one of these tap tags or one of your business cards, we'll help you uh, maintain that or at least teach you how to do it yourself in case you want to change it a lot. Um, but it's a pretty cool little thing. That way, instead of having a bunch of business cards that you have to pass out, you can actually just hold this wooden card out and have somebody with an NFC near field communications um, device, uh, their cell phone basically, and it'll suck your information right from that and you keep the card and they, they basically just walk out with all your information or a video loading on their phone or whatever so you can make a video that's an intro to your company and uh with all the links to your contacts and stuff so that's one thing if you're interested in having some wooden business cards nfc cards let me know i'll do a video on them once i make a few and show you some examples but uh one last thing, I've um, been working on this idea about a state, Pennsylvania state um, cooperative, quail cooperative. So let's say you have 50 eggs a day that you can sell and you sell half of them, right? And you have 25. Well, let's say there's another guy that has 25 and another guy that has 25. And you learn that the local... Uh, restaurant is starting to interested in selling quail or having quail dinners so if you went down there and said well look i can give you 25 quail a week well they're like that's not enough right but if you had two or three other farmlets farmlets other farmers other homesteaders that uh would be able to help you source that then you could bid on larger contracts and fulfill that with partners through this Pennsylvania State Quail Cooperative or New Jersey State or New York or Texas or wherever. So I'm trying to organize these cooperatives, this group buying um, subsidies or jobber sites. So if anyone has any ideas on how to make that work a little bit better, um, you can look at the Pennsylvania Quail Cooperative site that I have on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. And I'll be starting those for other states, but uh, be nice to be able to pull something off like that to help people not only sell their surplus, make more sales, expand their business, but you know, let's we need to all be friends as a community. <laughs> you know, I'm a dentist, and it's funny. I was telling my wife the other day about how you know you'd go to a seminar in Phoenix, and your practice is in Pittsburgh. And, you know, the dentists are covering up their answers like you're going to you're going to steal their patients in Phoenix. So, you know, people are real crazy. That's not the attitude to have. The attitude to have is we love quail and we want to 
be successful. We all want to be successful. We're not competitive. We're trying to get as many people out there growing their own protein, growing their own food as possible because there's going to be a time here in the near future that, uh, you know, that's going to be very important and it's probably sooner than you think. So anyway, just wanted to share that. If you have any ideas, email me at uh, Tully River Quail. I just started a new website, TullyRiverQuail.com. Um, my Gmail account is, is Tully River Quail at Gmail. But uh, give you a little walk over and I'll show you my quarantine cage just before these guys are sleeping right now. But turn on the lights. I got a white wing in there, a white, and I got a guy that never really developed. He's in the back. He's missing a couple toes on his legs, but I've kept him going. So, anyway, stay free. Love to hear from you. Tell your quail over and out.